Hello everybody, welcome back to RP1. As you can see, another short episode today, just focusing on a singular launch. Uh, an important launch, however, it is our first attempt at orbital rocketry, and our first contract on the Heavy Satellites program, that is to get a one kilogram satellite up into orbit. We don't have a lot of funds, and we are very close to the deadline of the real world timeline in rocket history of when Sputnik launched. And uh, if we hope to achieve that today, we are going to need to hustle and be smart with our money. This is the satellite that I came up with. It's uh, a lot more uh, primitive than what I am used to at this point. Typically, I have access to better quality engines, and I've only ever done an orbital mission uh, with the RD-105, so the gammas are unfamiliar to me. However, it is at this moment that I realized that we had actually unlocked two different uh, configurations of the RD-107s and the 108s, uh, and I did not test. I only tested that first uh, configuration, but given the fact that it's more expensive, I have a feeling that the second configuration may be a little bit better, a little more efficient. However, we don't have time to, to retest any of that. We've dedicated our launch pad to these materials, this weight, all that stuff. Uh, we can't change it up now. And as we see here, we actually have insufficient funds to unlock all the different parts. Uh, so we are going to have to unfortunately lay off the majority uh, <laughs> of our workers uh, a Black Friday if you will it is uh, so sad to let everybody go hundreds hundreds of people but uh, it is the co most cost-effective method right now to maintain our uh, timeline so we're gonna have to try to do as much as we can to unlock everything so we finally get enough money to unlock everything. However, now we don't have the funds to integrate it. We are 4,000 short, so we're gonna have to do some time warping yet again. To save you all the flashing lights, here we are now with 11,000 funds and we can add it to the list. Unfortunately, our mess and about has taken a lot of time from us and it is now August 11th of 1958. Uh, nearly a whole year after the launch of Sputnik, so we have indeed fallen behind historical timelines, but nonetheless there are other milestones to consider, and with the launch of today's heavy satellite one kilogram uh, contract, if we can complete it and get our first satellite up into orbit, we will be well on our way uh, towards achieving that. If we fail today, that will be a heavy setback, as you saw how much uh, it took to create this rocket, the funds, uh, the amount of work and time, so uh, it'd be good not to mess this up. I'm excited to test out the other configurations of the RD-108s uh, um, and the 107s. Uh, in the next episode, we are going to try to redesign this a little bit, see what other technology we have. We are uh, going to, if uh, all goes well with this mission, we'll be able to achieve some science up in space. We don't have anything big, but I do believe we have some uh, science still available in low Earth orbit. And in the next, uh, the next few launches, we're going to be launching more advanced stuff get more science from that as well. Once we have better quality technology, uh, things will become easier. Uh, in the next episode, to kind of make up for these last two episodes being fairly short, I'm going to spend the time to build uh, a couple different rockets. We're going to have a couple different launches. We're going to try to get as much of this heavy satellites program handled as possible and uh, try to make progress uh, as quickly as possible. I have some time, so I'll be able to dedicate a little bit more effort on to the next RP1 episode. So thank you again for your patience with the shorter episodes. I just didn't want to leave uh, leave it with nothing uh, this week. No RP1 at all. So uh, yeah, thank you for your patience. Anyways, getting back to the launch right here, I am no longer uh, using MechJev's Ascent Guidance. Uh, this is a kind of uh, hybrid manual and automatic launch profile. So right now we are just 
using our SAS to point uh, slightly above prograde uh, in an effort to extend out our time to apoapsis to give ourselves uh, plenty of time to burn on our upper stage. Problem is, is if we reach our apoapsis too soon, then we won't have enough burn time and we'll probably end up coming back through the atmosphere. So uh, this rocket is capable of getting to orbit, but it is a little touchy and you do have to fly it uh, in a very particular way. As you can see from our contract parameters, we actually have to be above 150. And if you look at our apoapsis, we are actually kind of struggling to reach that. Our time to apoapsis is dropping and is currently below uh, the halfway point of our burn time on our upper stage, so not ideal. I'm gonna try to point ourselves up a little bit. That does slow down our time to apoapsis and starts increasing it. And our apoapsis is now 145 kilometers, uh, and we will be passing that uh, 150 kilometer barrier, right? Ow. There we go, as long as we don't lose any of that apoapsis, uh, we should be good. We've got 22 seconds of burn time remaining in our lower stage. Like to see that. I like long burns. When dealing with heavy satellites, I like to deal with long, uh, continuous, high thrust burns. So now 167, uh, 170 kilometers apoapsis. We can actually start pitching ourselves down a little bit. Um, our time to apoapsis is, is a minute 26, which is below what we need. So we're going to just go ahead and get this started. As you see here, I'm using the RCS to thrust myself forward to give myself the ullage necessary to ignite all four of the gamma engines, or uh, would that be 16 of them? And we use our RCS, our near earth avionics, to point ourselves horizontal and uh, keep steady for the rest of the burn. And uh, the near-Earth avionics are a little heavier. We could essentially do this with a science core if we could manage to get ourselves pointed in the right uh, direction and with some spin stabilization. Uh, you could do this with a lighter weight craft. However, I felt that the advantage of being able to hold so perfectly still horizontally uh, to maximize our burn's potential uh, was worth it. Uh, it was worth the weight. It was uh, worth the cost and shape of it in order to uh, have this amount of control on our heavy satellites. With lighter satellites, it's definitely uh, the way to go. You want to minimize your weight. You want to maximize your efficiency and your build time. It would be a lot easier to beat milestones, I feel, with a, a lighter, lighter satellite, but pretty happy with our decision to go with heavy. I just enjoy it a whole lot more. There's a whole lot more Kerbal in uh, in it when you can just overbuild things. Get the uh, mindset of not just more boosters, but bigger boosters and procedural boosters. It's nice. But anyways, we are finishing up our journey here uh, as our engines continue to burn and eventually fizzle out. We will be coming in for an orbit. There we go. With that little camera shift, we have now passed the uh, Earth's atmosphere and we are indeed in orbit. We will have to let it sit for about a minute and 48 seconds so that way the contract can complete. But with everything else uh, managed, that contract is in the bag. So we're just going to take a final look at our success here. Uh, feel, this has uh, sounding con uh, sounding payload, minimal experiments. In fact, only one of them is actually going to be running. We will be getting about seven-ish uh, signs from this, and uh, it's not a lot, but it will be enough to put into a few more, a few more things and get. Uh, I think we're going to go solid rocket boosters for that. We have Jack Parsons as one of our leaders. Oh, there you go, first artificial satellite. We've got Jack Parsons, so we got to put him to use, and we're going to get that SRB technology going so we can get those casters and really start moving with the program. And like I mentioned in the next episode, uh, next Wednesday, it will be a bit longer to uh, make up for it. We're going to do more launches. 
but I am excited for that, and I hope you are as well. But anyways, that is where I'm going to leave today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward for more RP1. If you did think about subscribing, drop me a like, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.